I think I'm going live. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm live. Welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show. Um, my name is Jessica Davis, and I, oh, I'm starting over. Welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show. Uh, Jessica Davis coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I am the lead faculty for the Performing Arts Division with Ice. Hello, hi everybody. Good morning. Um, happy to see people are on this morning. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the foot core system. So what does that mean, and how does that apply not only to our dancer population, so I am going to talk about some dance specific moves today, but also you can apply this to anyone with a lower extremity issue that you want to work on foot strength because often the foot is something that not that we forget, but yet we know some of the basic exercises. But what I want to show you today is some of how do you take some of those basic exercises that we learn and make them a little bit more functional and practical to get our patient ready to perform in whatever capacity that is. So what is the foot core system? So the foot core system was developed um, in, it came out of an article um, in the British um, Journal of Sports Medicine and Science in 2015 um, by uh, McKean. And so what they proposed in this foot core system was to conceptualize the foot as more of um, a stabilizing parameter and consider it that it often works similarly to the lumbopelvic hip complex. So when you think about the foot core system, there are three components to consider. So you have your passive subsystem, right? So what's the passive subsystem? Passive subsystem would be the bones, ligaments, joints, etc., right? So the, the capsule, uh, joint capsule, etc., right? So that's the passive subsystem. The active subsystem would be the muscle and tendons components of that, right? So we can work on strengthening, and we know that. Then there's a third system, the neuro subsystem. So when we think of the neuro subsystem, when we think of the foot, we think of the sensory input, right? So sensory receptors and how that influences movement um, and reaction time, right? So when we look deeper into it, what I'm gonna emphasize today is foot intrinsics. So it's often the forgotten muscle. Um, and it shouldn't be. So if you look at the way that the foot intrinsics are anatomically, they're not built, if you, similar to when we think about the lumbopelvic hip complex, when we look at the deeper core muscles, right, they, they're not built for power. They're not built for movement generation. They're built for stability. So when you think about the lumb, uh, the you know foot intrinsics, um, there's more, instead of creating larger movements, there's a suggestion based in, in this article was that there may be some type of sensory, oh, I paused this, here we go, you're back, sorry about that. <laughs> um, oops, let me see here. Okay, I'm hoping I'm still, oh good, yay. Okay, still live, I apologize for that. So there is a sensory uh, stretch response that's theorized that the foot intrinsics create. So let's dive deeper into that. So if that's the case and we think that there's some influence of the foot intrinsics on that stretch response um, and motor control, then that's something that we as physical therapists can train and that would be to our advantage. And what's interesting is what they found is with fatigue, so when these foot intrinsics fatigue, with fatigue onset, you will see a drop in the navicular, the navicular drop. So excessive pronation, so the foot with fatigue. So when we think about our dance population, so the population that I work a lot with, obviously, um, there's a common issue with fatigue, right? So overuse, and we think about with a foot ankle complex specific to dancers, common injuries that we see are going to be flexor helicis longus tendinopathy. Um, you're going to see anterior and posterior impingement. The lateral ankle sprain is a common injury. Um, and when you universally look at these injuries, 
the common denominator, and I've talked about this in previous podcasts, the common denominator is a lot of these injuries derive from forced turnout. But that's not only the case, right? So they do say that this is this is a big thing to consider and to look for certainly when you're evaluating your patient. But don't forget the foot intrinsic strength. Now, if you look at foot intrinsic strength assessment, there's some variability. There's no gold standard with how to evaluate it. So sometimes you can use the dynamometer, you can do manual muscle testing, you can do the short foot exercise and have the patient stand and see if they can hold that position for 30 seconds and you can record the endurance in essence um, of those foot intrinsics. So that's one test. And so when you think about the foot intrinsics, what I wanted to spend some time today was to show you some exercises. So instead of lecturing the whole time, I'm going to show you some things to do. So I'm going to start with the basics because so Often you'll see, and it's not a bad exercise, you'll see uh, towel curls or marble, marble pickups. Can't talk today. When you're doing those exercises, those aren't bad exercises, but the problem is, similar to when we strengthen the core, um, what happens with those exercises is some of the larger muscle groups are going to take over and the foot intrinsics will not be completely isolated. Now, can we ever completely isolate a muscle? We know that. That's not the case, right? But you want to emphasize or maximize that potential. So just towel curls. If you do towel curls and a bit of plantar flexion, that will decrease um, those extra muscles working and it'll kind of emphasize the foot intrinsics firing. But I'm going to show you just some different exercises to consider. And if you look across the board, the very best exercise is the short foot exercise. And it's a basic exercise. I am going to review it because sometimes going over the basics, as we know, especially with ice, Experts do the basics well. So I want to show you how to look at this short foot exercise and it's warrants taking time. Just like when we think about when we're doing lumbar stabilization training and I know there's some, you know, all this debate about that, but still it helps to work on form and we talk about form in ice with everything, right? So when it comes to the foot, the short foot exercise, I'm just going to review that. So bear with me, I'm going to move my camera, um, getting used to all this technology. Okay, so I want to make sure everyone can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so to start this exercise, it's suggested that you start it in sitting. Now, why? Because we have better control in sitting. So I'm going to make sure you guys can see me from my camera on both angles here. Okay, so what you're going to do is make sure that when you're doing this, and hopefully you guys can all see me. Okay, so you start with your foot dorsiflexed. From that position, you want to extend the toes, and then you're going to have the patient lower in that position. So in that position, when, the, when you lower and you get your first ray depressed, you're going to naturally create that arch. So you want the patient to maintain that arch. Followed by that, what you want to do is slowly lower the toes down. Think of spreading the toes. And you want to, from that position, you encourage the patient to maintain that arch. So getting from dorsiflexion to then a neutral foot will enable the patient to get that arch position. Lower the toes. And what you want to watch here, as the patient lowers the toes, often you're going to get a little bit of curling, right? So you're going to get some clawing. When you see that, you want to discourage that because then they're not truly activating those foot intrinsics the way that you want. And especially when it comes to a dancer, we want to discourage that because that's going to cause some problems in the toes. So dorsiflex, lower, slowly lower the toes. Think of spreading them and then lengthening them. From that, you encourage the patient to then think about taking that first ray, depressing it, but then curling it, bringing it towards the arch. So as you bring it towards the arch, it's going to create that doming. So you want to look proximally and make sure you're not getting tibialis anterior activation. You want again to emphasize and that's very hard to turn off. So looking at that, trying to keep that tibialis anterior, turn it off, turn it off. And you might give a little tactile cueing. So from this position, you ask the patient to hold that for 30 seconds, right? So seems easy, but I want all of you to give it a whirl, give it a try because it's actually harder than it looks. Okay, so, and you might be surprised at how some of you struggle with this because we don't emphasize it a lot. How do you progress this exercise? Well, obviously, seated is not functional, is it? So we're going to move from that seated position to standing. So when we get the patient standing, it's the same exercise. So you're going to have them stand, and I'm going to move this camera now. You guys can see me a little bit better here. Hopefully lighting. I may actually turn around because the sun is creating an issue here. 
Okay. All right. So from that position, you're going to do it in standing and you'll start in double leg stance. Promise you guys, I did play around with this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in standing, hopefully you all can see my feet. Yes. Okay. So in standing, you're going to do the same exercise. So you're going to dorsiflex, lower the foot, creating that arch, allow the toes to come down and to relax, encourage that toe spreading, lengthening of the toes, watching that you're not getting the curling clawed, and then draw that first ray towards the arch. Okay. You're going to have the patient stand and they're going to have to hold, hold this position in double leg stance for 30 seconds. Followed by, you're going to get them into single leg stance and have them maintain that position. You can see I struggle. I instantly claw my toes. So my, as I was playing around with these exercises, I realized my, of course, weakness, which is always good to recognize, a little bit better on my left. So they have to maintain that single leg stance posture for 30 seconds. They can't do that. You can't progress, right? Well, that's again, that's not really that functional right? So single leg stance, great, but is that going to prepare my dancer to do jumps and leaps and to control plyometrics? Not at all. So I need to dynamically challenge this once my dancer or my athlete um, gets this proper positioning. So the next step after you do that, you want to incorporate a little bit of propulsion, right? So when we walk, we propel. So the first thing is just to work. You could just simply normalize it to gait, right? So you can work on single leg stance, finding that position. Now the, now the patient's got it. And then you're just working on transitioning, holding that, and then coming back and finding it again, right? So find that Position, don't curl the toes, maintain it, and cross over. How do you make this harder? We'll have them, even better yet, put a step in front of them so they have to propel forward and then step up onto that step. Great. So now we've got a little propulsion. You can incorporate speed. So with dancers, with my dancer population, a lot of them have different repertoire that I need to prepare them for. So they may have, uh, depending on you know the, the speed and tempo, I need to prepare them for that activity and work on controlling their foot. So I might do different speeds, slow and then fast and slow, right? So just to change it up a little bit. Progressing that further, I need to incorporate some rotation, right? So I really like this. So you can work on, so in dance, we do something called an on day or turn, or we'll do an on day don turn. So this way. So what I'm going to have the dancer do is find that first position. I'm sorry, neutral foot in parallel, the position of the short foot. So they're going to find that they're going to then do a demi plie. And what I'm going to have them do is propel. So for here, I'm going to do what's called an on day don. For those of you who aren't working with dancers, you don't have to worry about that. But what you think of is you're either going to turn towards the foot or away from the foot. And it's good to prepare the athlete to do both. So from this position, I can hold, I can control that foot and then land and face the other direction. <laughs> and you can laugh at me. Okay. Then I can also work at the opposite direction, maintaining that foot, hold, and then turn and land right? So you can work on both directions, controlling that short foot exercise dynamically now, incorporating rotation. I know all of you at ICE think, hey, where's the kettlebell, right? Absolutely. Hold that short foot position, transfer the kettlebell, incorporate that dynamically in whatever way you want. You are creative, all of you out there. That's why you're watching this. So use your brain and think of what do I need to get my athlete ready for, right? So propulsion, rotation, um, speed, tempo. So think about different ways that you can challenge that short foot exercise and prepare that athlete to return for their activity. Okay, so we can't just think about the short foot. Short foot is the place to start just as with the lumbopelvic core, coming back to that foot core concept. When we think of the foot, just as with the core, we're thinking about engaging that transverse abdominis and then progressing those exercises. So we think about just the bracing activity. So the short foot equated to almost lumbar bracing and how you would build from there. You also have to think an important activator is the hallux abduction. Okay. So this is very surprisingly challenging, but something that you have to work on. So when you're working on hallux abduction, similar to the short foot, you want to start with that seated position because it's going to build from there. 
So you'll get the patient again seated, and I'm gonna scoot back a little bit, hopefully all of you can see. So when you think of this, a great way to remember it is think of, tell your patient, I want you to get your big toes to kiss. <laughs> so you're gonna find that short foot position again, you've trained your athlete, you're gonna get into this position, and then what you wanna do is get it pretty close, and you want to try to get their big toes to spread out and basically kiss each other which is incredibly difficult. So I struggle with this. So if you find that they can't even engage, what you wanna do is use a little tactile cueing. So what I'll first do is take the hallux, abduct it, and then I'm gonna isometrically say hold, 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 right? Very hard. And if you all sit down and try this, I guarantee you're going to feel how challenging that is just holding against isometric resistance. So holding that once they gain that then you're going to work on just active control which i actually unfortunately <laughs> i need to work on this i can't do it so i have some clear weakness and things i need to work on just as we all do so um hallux abduction spreading the toes right so we talk about an exercise um often called the piano toes so that's having the control so the first exercise you find that short foot position you're going to lower those toes and then you want to encourage keeping the first ray depressed, keeping that short ray so you're not, you're not curling, and then you're lifting the second through the fifth digits. You're gonna follow that by depressing all the toes and then only lifting the hallux, okay? I apologize. Uh, hopefully this will go back. Um, people seem to want to call me this morning. Um, okay, good, I'm live again, excellent. Okay, so piano toes, right? So you're toes down, lift up, big toe down, lift up the toes, right? So you're fluctuating between both. Okay, so you can also, when the athlete gets really good, you can, as a piano, you can try to encourage each toe coming down very hard. Sometimes you can use a TheraBand um, and work on having the TheraBand under each individual toe and work on depressing as you try to move that TheraBand. All right, so again, great exercises. You'll feel your foot working in ways you've never felt before. I guarantee it when you try some of these, but let's progress even further, okay? So nice exercise is to take, so to build on that short foot exercise again, take a TheraBand and fold it into teeny tiny little piece here, okay? So you can see teeny tiny little piece. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it under my first ray and I'm gonna, only have it under that. I'm gonna instruct my athlete to find that short foot position. They're going to spread the toes, draw that first ray in, hold that position from there, and then they're gonna pick up this band, okay? Now, what you really want is to have it around the wrist so they're not working on grip, so you're getting it around the wrist, and you can just tie it there, and then have them hold that position and then you have them lift the opposite leg and isometrically hold. Surprisingly challenging watching, as you can see, if any of you are really analyzing my foot, I cannot do this exercise without clawing my toes. What does that mean? I'm not ready for this. I am not strong enough. But if I really was able to, you can encourage me, keep that those toes spread, not clawing, holding that short foot position, and then stabilize. How do I build on that? You're gonna incorporate movement, right? So I'm gonna get into that position and I can do a ponche, just a little arabesque ponche. I can incorporate from there even rotation, right? So holding that position, keeping that, rotating off of my hip, and then coming back. Incredibly challenging. My foot is killing me from just doing those, right? So building from there, I can work on more dance specific. Now this is getting into more dance specific type of tasks but I need to be able to incorporate movement and maintaining that. So I can get into my parallel arabesque position, holding that short ray. I can work on panche. I can work on whatever activity I need to do. I can also incorporate some propulsion from here, which is definitely more dance specific. Finding that short position, plie, come up, land, or coming up here, and then leaping and then landing onto the opposite foot. So the world is your oyster and whatever you guys come up with, it's gonna be creative. But the key is with, as with everything, you need to apply these exercises into whatever your athlete needs to do. So in review, when you think of the foot, think of it as 
Another concept, the foot core concept. Thinking of that has many, many functions. And if you train it, thinking about all the different subsystems that are involved, you really wanna think about two, training the foot intrinsics, right? And with those foot intrinsics, the first exercise can be the short foot exercise. It's one of the best to activate those. Remember those foot intrinsics not only have some stability, but they also have some neuro input. And maybe there's a factor that with fatigue, we see that foot drop. And so with what we want to do is then train to prevent that fatigue so that your athlete doesn't have some overuse injuries that we see develop up the kinetic chain. Now you can know with a short foot, you can progress that. So at least you have some tools in your toolbox about not just the basic towel curls or marble pickups, which aren't bad exercises, don't get me wrong, just a little progression of how do I take that exercise and build it and create something a little bit more functional, incorporate propulsion, incorporate rotation, incorporate speed. Um, and then don't forget that it's toe spreading is important, piano toes. Um, and then again, get creative. So I hope you all enjoyed this and learned something and thanks for watching. Um, just so you know, um, I will be teaching, yay, my course in Pittsburgh um, in September. I changed it because of COVID for all of you. Um, and what I'm going to be doing for the first time, um, and only time most likely, is I'm going to be doing an online course. Um, it's going to be on Saturday. So for those of you who have thought about taking my course and they weren't sure, I didn't know if I wanted to travel, come for one day, spend it with me. I'm going to do live lab working. I have a dancer coming. I'm going to demonstrate different things that I do in the clinic and I'm going to teach, et cetera, et cetera. It'll be one day on Saturday, September 19th. So if you have thought about things with dance, wanted to explore it, but weren't sure you wanted to come for a full weekend, this is the chance. Um, so I hope some of you attend. I would love to meet you even though it's virtual and hopefully I get to meet you all live. So again, thank you for listening um, and have a great day. All right, bye everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.